I'm Earl Drieschen. I'm the Member of Parliament for Red Deer Mountain View, and uh, I'm a Conservative from Alberta. Well, it's uh, one of those times, types of things that uh, where timing is significant. Uh, I had spent uh, probably 30 years of my life uh, working for people that I had wanted to get into politics, whether it was municipal or provincial or federal. And uh, when I retired from teaching, uh, the opportunity arose. And so all of those that I had helped over the years had said, well, hey, why don't you put your name in? And, uh, uh, and that's really what started it. Uh, I had been my family had been involved. I mean, we had come to Alberta back in 1903, and, and uh, you know, you had to build the schools, you had to make sure there were hospitals, you had to build roads and power and, and natural gas and so on. So it was, a, it was sort of a service to community, so it was sort of an extension of that. Well, I think the point is that you get a chance to help people. And I had a private member's bill um, that changed the Criminal Code of Canada. And uh, it came from a discussion that I had had with a constituent, uh, a young girl and her mother. Uh, she had been viciously attacked by a person that had uh, dressed up as a police officer. And uh, so, of course, that was the disarming factor and uh, you know she managed to escape fortunately um, but even at the end when she had phoned her folks you know and he said well don't worry I'll, I'll call the police it was no it was the police that did it you know so so these were so having a chance to change the criminal code of Canada I think that was important and and what we did is we made it in an aggravating circumstance to personate a police officer and so that gave the courts more um, more direction when it came to sentencing and I think when you talk about the proudest moment is that in the last 10 years that is what I see more happening in other types of legislation when it comes to um, the Criminal Code of Canada. So, so I think that's probably, um, you know, from just the straight political side of it, that that's probably one of those things that I feel proudest of. Well, as I said, my, uh, the motivation that I have to go to work every day uh, is strictly service. I mean, I've, I've done that my whole life. I was a, a high school math and physics teacher for 34 years. Um, I enjoyed being in the classroom because that's where the students were. I had no interest in, uh, you know, in the management side of it because students were the important part. And, and I feel the same thing here. It's, uh, you see problems and issues that people have and, uh, and you bring a good team around you so that uh, they, they look for solutions and that's, that is what is most important to me. Well, I had a lot of experience by helping former MPs and MLAs and so on, so I, I sort of felt like I, I knew what to expect. Um, I don't think I realized just how difficult the travel was going to be um, because, you know, it, it's basically eight hours twice a week, uh, you know, to get from door to door. So that's, uh, that I think has probably been the hardest part. I thought that I could handle it. And, uh, um, but other than that, uh, I, think, I think I had a pretty good idea of what I was, uh, was getting into. And again, I had a lot of great mentors and that I think is the critical part. When you come here, um, you know, you, you know that you're, you're brand new, there's lots of things to learn. Uh, my, my staff here in Ottawa, I had uh, the same staff as the former MP had, so, uh, and, and her, her job was to make sure I stayed out of trouble and didn't do anything wrong, and, and uh, you know, so she's managed to do that uh, over this last 15 years. Uh, but I think that's the key thing, is just to make sure that, um, you know, that you, you, you look at what is happening day by day, keep your head on straight, and understand that you, you are here for the people that, uh, that elected you. Well, I think the, the key aspect was with the private members bill that I spoke of before, when you're trying to, to uh, get something done. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly uh, 
difficult to get the legislation moved forward. However, there were folks that did have questions and, uh, you know, so we were bringing in uh, the, the people from different parties to understand the motivation behind what we were doing. Uh, and I think that was critical. But I've also, I've also had a chance to go to uh, international, on international uh, visits and uh, whether it was with Parliament Americas or Asia Pacific or the OSCE, so the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which I've been attending. Um, that's when you get a chance to, to work with other political uh, parties and uh, and usually for a for a common goal and uh, you know so that's that is one of those opportunities where you get to see things happening across party lines. Over the last number of years what I have seen most is divisiveness and pitting one group against another. Um, <clears throat> At the very beginning, when I first came, I mean, you know, I, I knew that there was politics and I understood that, you know, you'd have good days and bad days and, you know, there's no sense getting too high and there's no sense getting too low because, you know, it would just be a continuum from there. But uh, I hadn't seen, you know, the let's try to divide uh, because uh, then you'll keep people off their game. And I think that's probably been the worst part, um, you know, and, and so if it, it, takes, it takes a lot of people to decide that they want to change that. And unfortunately, with social media and people playing to uh, social media, uh, it just makes people feel even more isolated. Uh, the, the COVID, uh, you know, the times when people have been, you know, locked up and, and things of that nature, I think that too has caused a lot of concern. As a former teacher, um, I know how difficult uh, it is for students to be able to learn. Uh, you know, we can talk about how great it is to have, you know, self-directed learning and doing this over Zoom and, and so on, but there are some students where that works very well and there's others uh, that that need the help. I always, you know, I had lots of students that could, you know, get amazing marks, but I always said, you know, I probably wasn't needed much for those. It's the ones that, that were struggling that needed me as a teacher and, and somebody that was able to help them. So so I think I think that's it. And and sometimes, you know, in this in this navigating one political position versus another political position, uh, it loses sight of those that you're, that you're really here to help. Well, as a former teacher, uh, I see the talent that is there. I have so many of my former students are engineers or doctors or farmers and, and, and construction workers and working on, on you know, oil rigs and so on where they really need a certain skill set and, and they're interested in, uh, uh, in helping out their communities and their families. So that, that to me is the positive. Um, and I think, you know, people having to do research and, uh, and understanding that just the things that you see on Facebook or Twitter or the news even uh, needs, needs to be thought of um, very, analytically and uh, and if people do that and if they if they question and uh, want to look for other uh, other voices in things that concern them I think that uh, I think that that is a way to navigate through the um, sometimes the the little traps that have been set for them when it comes to uh, whether it be politics or or life in general When I was 16 years old, I actually had just started university, and so I uh, I was there um, in with an opportunity to learn a lot of things, and uh, I started off in computing science and pure mathematics. Um, I realized at that time that uh, I had other interests. So I had already bought a farm, and uh, so I had wanted to farm, and and uh, and also. I, I started off typing with, with two fingers 
<clears throat> now we do it with two thumbs, but, but uh, at that time it was, uh, I, I really found it difficult when you had five or 600 uh, cards that you had to type in to put into a computer. Uh, and uh, I think the first thing I would have said to myself, spend a little bit more time learning how to type. <laughs> so that would have been the first part. It would probably made that easier. But uh, sitting in front of a machine uh, did not, uh, was not something that I really thought I wanted to continue doing. And that's why I chose to go into teaching. And uh, plus I could be close to where I farmed and, and uh, continue with, with that love that I had, the love of the land, you know. So, so learning things and of course, now that I'm much older, um, I think of all of the experiences that I've had, not just not just here in Parliament, where where some amazing things take place and opportunities, but um, you know, in the rest of my life, and think, well, you know, there's a lot of exciting things out there and uh, things that you'd like to try. So just be open to new experiences. So.